Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at 10 random Photoshop CS5 tips and techniques. That's right, just 10 tips off the top of my head that don't necessarily relate to each other, although a couple do. And these are tips that work in some versions of Photoshop, but they all work in Photoshop CS5. So hope you enjoy these 10 random tips. Let's go ahead and start off with a tip for the mini bridge. So mini bridge is an addition to Photoshop CS5 and InDesign CS5. And of course, it, it's even though bridge is running in the background, mini bridge allows me to access the most commonly used features inside bridge inside my application without having to switch back and forth. And here's your first tip. If you want to see a full size preview of that image that I have selected without having to actually open it in Photoshop, just hit your spacebar. Just like in regular Bridge, you can hit your spacebar, even for Mini Bridge, to fill the screen with the image and see if that's the one you really want. All right, so that's tip number one. Now, the next tip we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open that image up, and we're going to do a straightening tip. Now, there are all kinds of ways to straighten a photo inside of Photoshop CS5. Uh, and of course, one of the new ways is actually building on something that was always there, just making it easier. So we're going to grab the ruler tool. Again, this is not a new tool. It's been there before. But now we can drag along, along the horizon to straighten this image. It's slightly crooked. But once we drag it out, we don't have to do any special tricks to actually apply the straighten. Because now in CS5, there's a straighten button right there on the control panel. So just drag out your line on what should be straight. Click the straighten button, and it will straighten and crop your image all in one step to straighten it out for you. Now, speaking of cropping, let's go to tip number three. We'll grab our crop tool, and we'll just go ahead and drag out a crop. Now, you can make the crop any, you know, any size you want, but the problem is you could never go beyond the actual image, at least not in the first pass. Once you let go and you've got your crop, tank, crop rectangle there, you can now drag the handles beyond the actual image itself. And you're thinking, well, what's that going to do? Of course, it, you know, it would give us, what is that going to do? <laughs> you know, you have to start thinking, if I drag outside the image, and now if I hit enter, that will actually reverse crop the image. In other words, it's giving me a little extra border around the image without me having to add canvas size manually. So that was tip number three. Now the next thing is, is kind of another new CS5 tip. And that is whether you do it from bridge, mini bridge, or the operating system, you can now drag an image directly into a Photoshop window. So if you've got an image open, you can drag another image into it. And without having to actually open that image, you can just drag the actual file in from the operating system or from, the, uh, from bridge. And it will add it as a layer, as even a smart object layer, inside the image that you were currently working on. Okay, so that's cool. Now let's go ahead and switch over to another image here I've got on Coit Tower. And this image is just a background. In other words, there is no extra layer here. Now we know that if we double click on a background, that brings up the new layer dialog box. And if we were to click OK, that will create a new layer. But let's undo that because here's a tip for a faster way. Here's tip number five. If you want to make this into a layer without having to double click on it and click OK, just drag the lock icon for the background to the trash in the layers panel and voila, you've got your extra layer right there. So just dragging the lock icon to the layers trash icon will turn that background into a layer. All right, moving on to tip number six. And this is one that I get questions on all the time because of the new application framed and tabbed interface in Photoshop. People are saying, well, I want to drag this image to another window that I already have open, but I can't see the other window. And if you try and do it from the layers panel, it's not going to work. So what you can do is grab your move tool, start moving your image that you want to move to another window, drag up to the tab for that other window, Hold down until that window comes up to the front, then drag your image into that window. When you let go, it will add it as another layer, basically duplicating the layer from one document into another document 
without having to have the windows side by side. So you can do it. It is possible. You just saw me do it. All right, the next one is kind of handy, especially on, I find I use this all the time on the clone stamp tool. And actually, if we go to the clone stamp tool, we'll actually be using it here. And the clone stamp tool is great when I want to use um, different brushes. However, the problem is once I pick the brush I want, and I pick the size and I pick the hardness or softness and now I'm ready to start cloning well that dialogue is still there and that kind of bugs me because if I click I'm gonna get a warning if I option click of course it'll go away but what if I just wanted I'm done choosing my size and I just want to dismiss that brush size dialog box well it's as simple as hitting return or enter on your keyboard the brush brush sizes will go away then you can do your cloning the way you want to. All right, so there we are. Uh, let's move on to the next tip. This is a kind of a cool one for working with lens flare. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go up to my filter menu, come down to render, go to lens flare. Lens flare is certainly not a new feature. It's been around for years and years. And of course, in this preview, you can turn down the lens flare. You can pick the kind of lens flare you want. But what a lot of people miss here is that your lens flare doesn't have to be in the spot that it defaults to. You can actually pick it up right in the preview window and drag it around wherever you want that lens flare to appear. And then when you click OK, that's where it's going to be. So lens flare, dragging it around right in the preview window, and that was tip number eight. Now let's go ahead and switch over to an image I've got here of Rita. And we'll just go ahead and zoom in on this image. And the problem with Rita's image in this case is she's got some flyaway hair here that can be kind of distracting, especially when it goes across the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my spot healing tool. Now the spot healing tool is not new in CS5, but this option is. It's content aware now. You've seen me do demo content aware fill before. Well, the actual healing brush is also content aware. And what I've found out recently is that it's really, although it's great for removing things like pimples and marks and uh, little things on people's faces that, you know, wouldn't normally be there, it's also great for removing flyaway hair. That's right, just drag it along the flyaway hair. Even if that flyaway hair I found is within the eyes or something else, Content Aware Healing just seems to do a great job of that now compared to the old spot healing brush that may start picking up other anomalies or things that you don't want. So, if you're a photo retoucher, definitely you want to check out the content aware option in the spot healing tool to make your hair in the face go away. All right, last but not least, and this is going to be tip number 10. Time flies when you're having fun. We're going to zoom out. And you're going to get a couple of tips out of this, but uh, I'll show you when I'm ready to talk about the actual tip for number 10. But we've got to get the image ready first. I've got Rita, and I've got a background behind her that I would love to see her on, but I don't want to see these cloths that are hanging down. So I've got a, a selection already saved. It was done with a quick selection tool, so nothing fancy. And as you know, the quick selection tool, while it does a pretty good job around hard edges, it does not do a good job around soft edges like hair. So we, we got some issues going on here. I'm just going to go ahead and let's grab the quick select one more time. I see a spot that I kind of missed there. Let's go ahead and get that in there. So we can add to our selection obviously. But no matter what I do, that's just not going to be a good selection around the hair with that tool. So we'll go to refine edge. We'll use our refine edge command to show it on layers, meaning show me what it's going to look like on the actual layer that's behind it. So show me on layers. That's not the tip though. The tip, and it's not in this dialog box at all, but I'm gonna use the refine edge to kind of bring back the hair. We'll go ahead and switch to a larger brush here on the Wacom tablet. And we're just gonna use the refine edge command to go around the background area around the hair to bring out that flyaway hair that I know she has that wasn't showing because of the quick mask tool. So we can go in, we can spend a little bit more time making that better, but again, this is not the tip. 
All right, so let's go ahead and we'll give it, even give it a little smart radius. We'll give it a little decontaminate colors. And now we'll click OK. OK, and here comes the tip. We've got Rita separated on her own background. It put it on a new layer all by itself with a mask. That's great, so I can go back and continue working on it. However, I would now love to see that layer and our background layer combined as one new layer. So here's the tip. On the Mac, I'm gonna hold down Command, Option, and Shift, and hit the letter E. On the PC, that would be Control, Alt, Shift, letter E, and that will take all your layers and make a new combined layer so that you can continue working without having to, or with the ability of going back to your previous layers if you messed up and needed to do more work. So you get all your layers in one new combined layer with Command, Option, Shift, E, or PC, Control, Alt, Shift, E. So that was tip number 10. Hope you enjoyed them. And thanks for watching this week's episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Take care.